Today I'm going to show you how to create this cool ice tunnel texture. Here's a high quality still image I rendered out. And here's an animation I made of the camera moving through the tunnel. This is actually fairly easy to do and produces a really cool result through the use of arrays and curve modifiers. I'll even show you how to set up the camera so that it moves through the tunnel nicely. This is what our end node setup is going to look like. Also this. To set up our scene, let's get rid of this cube and hit Shift A to bring in a cylinder. I'm going to hit R, X, 90 and Enter to rotate this 90 degrees on the X axis. Press N to bring up this shelf on the right here. And then let's change these dimensions. Uh, let's change this to 5, 5 and 10. And then uh, hit N to get rid of that shelf again and hit Control A. We'll apply the uh, rotation scale. You can do them separately or you can just go all transformations and then these should all be zero here and these should all be one. Tab into edit mode and hit control R. We're going to make some loop cuts. Uh, use your mouse wheel to scroll up and you can see the number changing in the bottom left corner of the screen. I'm going to choose 18 because that makes it pretty close to being square faces there. Uh, we just want something close to that to you know, make our displacement look nice. Go ahead and hit 3 to go into face mode and grab these two faces and just delete those as well. I'm going to tab out of edit mode and just hit 1 and then the period on the bottom right hand corner of my uh, uh, keyboard there. And you can't actually see the cylinder because uh, we're just looking at it sideways right now. But I'm going to hit control, alt, and then 0 on the number pad. And so it just sets my camera view to my, or pardon me, makes my uh, uh, 3D viewport into my camera view. So now if I scroll around, basically my camera is on the Y axis now. So I can hit G and Y, just kind of move it in there closer to the cave. You know, and if I'm looking now, uh, I can kind of see the inside of the cave there. I'm going to get rid of this light and just bring in a uh, background and an HDRI here. So first I just brought on a plane with uh, Shift A again and I'm going to hit S and then 10 to size it up quite far. Uh, tab into edit mode and hit 2 to go into edge select and I'm going to grab this back edge. First I'll drag it along the Y for a little bit and then hit E and then Z. Just drag it straight up and I grab this bottom edge here and hit Control B. It creates a bevel. I'm going to use the mouse wheel to create some extra cuts there. Uh, about this many is probably good. You don't need to go overboard. Just tap back into object mode and hit W or right click to bring up this context menu and shade smooth. And uh, let's do that to our tunnel too before we forget. Let's bring in an HDRI. Go to the world properties here and uh, next to color, click on this yellow circle and select environment texture. Then go to open and just navigate to where you've got your HDRIs. We've got some nice free ones from uh, HDRI Haven. And I've been using this for the last few, the Sunset and the Quarry 2K. I'm just going to use it for this again. Uh, we need to adjust it though. I want to rotate it around. And the way to do that is, uh, first of all, let's change this to the, or actually I'm going to split the screen, change the left side to the shader editor, then change from object to world. Uh, just get rid of that with N. Well, why don't we just make this a full screen? Uh, I did that, by the way, by holding down Control and hitting space bar. And whichever screen you're hovering over just makes that full screen. You just do it again to uh, go back to normal. Or you go up here, back to previous. But anyway, I'm looking at my HDRI. And uh, I'm going to hit Control T. That brings up the texture coordinate and mapping node. And I'm just going to change the Z to 160. So I'm going to hit Control and then space bar. Go back there. And now the sun is coming from the left. That kind of creates some cool dynamic lighting there. Let's also make sure the normals are facing in on this cylinder. Uh, so we can go into solid mode here. It's easier to see what's going on. I'm going to come up here to, actually I need to tab into edit mode, and come up here to this arrow and uh, just navigate down to where it says normals. And I'm going to display normals on the faces as lines. And I can actually affect the size there as well. So I'll just turn it up a little bit easier to see. Uh, basically, they're all going outwards. We want them to point inwards though. So I'm going to highlight everything with A and then hit Shift N. And then go down here to where it says recalculate normals and just click inside. I'm going to turn these off uh, just by clicking this off here and just tap out of edit mode. And we are going to add an array modifier and a subdivision surface modifier. So the array modifier, let's just change it from X. We'll just set that to zero. We'll set Y to one. So now it's adding on to the end over here. And I'm going to turn this up to, let's do you know, four or five, I think is pretty good. What that means is we're going to have to make this a little longer. So I'm going to go in here 
just select all of these faces and uh, hit G and then Y to move them over here. By the way, a really quick way to select all those faces would be to select this and then hit Control I. It selects everything else. We also need to switch to cycles as well. Eevee won't work for displacement. So go ahead and switch to cycles. We don't need to go to experimental, but uh, if you have GPU compute, go ahead and select that. Then come down here to the material properties and uh, I guess we don't even have anything on our tube yet. Why don't we just put that same material that was on our default cube. We'll just rename that. Uh, you just need to come in the shader editor, change this back to object. Then we can rename that here. We'll call that ice cave or ice tunnel or whatever. We also need to enable displacement inside the material properties on the right here. Just navigate down to settings and under displacement, it'll say bump only. Just change this to either displacement only or displacement and bump. I'm going to use displacement and bump because it adds a little bit more detail. I'm going to grab here and uh, just close this right window there so that my shader editor is the whole middle of the screen. Then I'm going to make this top right the 3D viewport and just make it a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And uh, just getting a good view here. Hold Z, move my mouse up, go into rendered mode. I'm going to start building the texture. I'm going to hit Shift A and just search for a texture coordinate node. Just put it in here. We're going to be coming out of object. So then I'm going to add in a noise texture. I'll just place it right here. And um, I'm going to actually add in three of these. There's going to be two that are coming out of the factor. And then the bottom one is coming out of the color for whatever reason. Um, this top one is going to go into a color ramp. And then same with this bottom one here. So I mean to duplicate it that way. Uh, this one, like I said, factor, factor, and this one's coming out of the color. You don't have to set it up the same way. You can use either factor or color. They produce a really similar result. But uh, this is just what I originally did. So this is going to get me closer to my original render. I'm going to bring in a mix RGB, place it right here. And this color is going to go into the factor. And this, uh, I guess this factor right here, is going to go into color 1. And then let's go into this color here. Look at the hex code. This should read 808080, just like that. So it's a little bit more gray. Let's adjust these noises here. For this top one, we're going to change the scale to 0.5. The detail is going to go to 6. And then I'm going to change the roughness to 0.3. This noise texture right here, uh, the scale is going to be 1. The detail is going to be 6. And the roughness, again, is going to be 0.3. And this bottom one, we're just going to change the scale to 0.5. Everything else is going to remain the same. Let's look at this top color ramp. We're going to change this bottom color to a hex code of 333333. And that's just, uh, you know, a little bit lighter gray than the black there. And we're going to change this to a position of 0.25. Then we're going to move the white down to 0.77. Before we set up this bottom color ramp, let's uh, set up some displacement. So I'm going to bring in a displacement node here, then run the mix RGB into the height. Then I'm going to run this into the displacement here. So if we see what it's doing, um, you know, just got some nice bits that are coming through with the noise and just displacing into the cave. I'm going to change the mid level to 0.7 and the displacement to 2. So it's a bit more uh, exaggerated there. Then if we come over to the color ramp here, I'm going to change this to ease instead of linear. It's just going to make it a bit softer. And if we bring these uh, in a little bit, you know, you can see if we bring this in, it exaggerates the noise there again. And if we bring the white in, it creates spots where there is no noise. So there's a bunch of flat areas, uh, basically, if we drag that white down because we're getting more of this second channel here. So I'm going to bring the black up to 0.23 and the white is going to come to 0.56. Let's look at this principled BSDF now. Um, I'm just going to view it through there. And let's turn this transmission all the way up to 1. This color here, we're just going to leave you know, as is. Uh, that's fine. And we're going to plug this color ramp into the roughness. So if we look at our camera, let's check out what this render looks like. This looks pretty good so far. We've got some rough areas here and some not so rough areas over here. It does look a little noisy here, so uh, why don't we clean this up with a denoiser. To do that, just come up to the render properties and under denoising, just check this box that says NLM. Sometimes that will kind of blur out the details on some of your renders, so to compensate for that, just bump up this render samples. I also want to change the settings of this background. 
So I'm going to click on there and just go into my camera view again. And if I go over to my object properties, I can go to visibility and I can unclick some things like transmission and shadow. And what this does is basically anywhere um, where it's, you know, something is transmitting through another object, such as through my ice cave here, uh, this white background that I set up isn't going to show through there. So it's just showing my HDRI through the transmission. I'm going to set up a plane for the water. So let's turn off this array modifier for a second uh, so we can see how long this thing actually is. And I'm going to hold down Z, move my mouse right to go into solid mode, and then hit uh, Control and Spacebar to go full screen here. Just hit Shift A, bring in a plane. I'm going to view from the top here. Just hit S and then Y to scale along that axis. And uh, I'm just going to hold down Control so it kind of snaps in place. I can kind of see where it's snapping right to uh, probably the same length as that cylinder. I'm going to isolate it with forward slash and tab into edit mode and just make a few loop cuts so that it's you know closer to squares. Something like this looks good. Just make four loop cuts. Tab back into uh, object mode and hit forward slash again so we get everything here. I'm going to hit control and space bar so we go back into the regular view here and uh, let's add the ice cave material to our plane as well. I'm just going to click this button right here. That creates a new material we can call this uh, ice cave floor if we want. So it just differentiates the two materials. And then I'm going to change this displacement to something like 0.3. I think that's fine. We can always adjust this if we want, but I'm going to keep it the same for now. I'm going to go into rendered mode and just add on an array and a subdivision surface modifier. Let's make sure it's set to simple. And uh, I'm just going to move this down a little bit here. A little too far. And I'm going to move it uh, to the left as well, just along the x-axis, just something like this, because then I can put an array on both of these here. So I'm going to go like, you know, actually, I'm going to do two different array counts. I'm going to do one for the x and then a second one for the y. And I'm just going to make sure they're both above that subdivision surface there. So I'm going to switch this to zero. And this is going to be, you know, whatever our other number was. I think it was five. Uh, not that number. We're going to leave that at 1. This one changes to 5. And uh, I'll just bump this up to 3 right here. So now it expands across the entire thing. And let's turn this array back on as well. Just make sure they match up. Looks good. We can also hit this merge here. It's not going to matter as much in this one here, but it basically just stitches those uh, sections together so that light doesn't pass through in the middle there. So merge here as well. Merge here. I'm also going to come to the object properties here and just turn off the transmission through here because otherwise you're going to see where the uh, the plane ends through this ice wall. I'm going to go into object mode here and hit shift A and bring in a curve. I'm going to bring in the path. I'm going to hit G and then uh, Y to move it along the Y axis and just basically put it pretty close to where my camera origin point is. Then hit R, Z and 90 to rotate it 90 degrees along the Z axis. Next, we need to select both our camera and our path by hitting or holding down shift and then just selecting both. We need to make sure that our path is the one that's this color and the camera is like this more orangey color. Then let's hit F3 to go into search and just type in follow path. And uh, if we do that correctly, we should be able to hit play by hitting spacebar and the camera will just move slowly uh, forward along this path. I'm going to tab into edit mode so I can adjust this path. I'm going to grab these four, uh, not the, basically everything but that first point. And then hit G and Y. I'm going to drag them closer this way here. Um, let's do the same thing again. Uh, we'll just kind of drag these along. I don't really care if they're set equidistant. It um, doesn't really matter too much. We can always change that around. And it's also really not important. Uh, since this doesn't quite reach the end too, I'm just going to hit E and then Y to extrude one more point to the end there. I'm going to tab out of edit mode and click on the tunnel. And let's come to the modifiers panel, and I'm going to add a curve modifier. Let's just uh, reduce the size of these ones here. So if we come to the curve object, I can come here and select the NURBS path. And now if I go back to the curve, I can go into edit mode. And if I change any of these, the ice tunnel is going to change as well. So it's kind of nice. Uh, by changing this curve, I can change that camera path and the ice tunnel really quickly. I'm going to grab this fourth point here, move it a little bit down, and just a little bit to the right. 
I'm going to move this last point a little bit to the left and a little bit up. I'm going to expand this as well. Let's grab it, hit S and X. I'm going to hit the zero on the bottom right of my keyboard to go into camera view. And let's full screen this and we can hit play and see what it's doing. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty cool. It is quite fast, so, so I'm going to go uh, back to regular view here. And let's click on our path. We can come down to the object data properties. And if we go to the path animation, we can change this frames value here. If we move it uh, to a higher number, it's going to be a slower path animation. Uh, I liked the look of uh, 500. So if we see, you know, now it's going to look a little bit slower there as it moves through. Let's take a look at the rendered view here. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll move this water slightly down as well. So you have to kind of be in rendered mode to see what it looks like. Uh, unfortunately, it is a little sore, but, you know, that's kind of what we have to do for this displacement here. That looks pretty good. And, uh, you know, this is a rough idea of what the animation is going to look like. But obviously, it doesn't look very nice up here right now. We can see if we go to the last frame by holding shift and right arrow. Uh, it doesn't quite breach the cave, so why don't we set this at like maybe 350 or something like that. Let's take a look at that frame. Ah, uh, that looks pretty good too. Um, I'm noticing my camera isn't quite centered here, so maybe that changes. Let's just see what it looks like if we set it to 500. Um, just going to go frame by frame. Whoa, 50, no, 500. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's not quite as centered as my original one. Uh, I must have done that one a little bit better with this curve setup. But uh, just play around with it. The possibilities are pretty large here. I think it would have been a little bit better if I made this end section a little bit straighter. Uh, maybe starting from here, just all the way, and maybe do the dip closer to here. That would help center the camera on the end. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you're able to follow along. You can see what I was doing. If you are confused, let me know. I'll see what I can do to help. Thanks for watching.